So Chris Yell, so nice that you should, you could be here. Um, so we thought we'd start by um, maybe asking you a little bit about uh, you, your practice in particular and its sort of relationship to uh, the rhythm of the city and, and um, particularly what we filter in and filter out in sort of urbanised environments. So maybe beginning with the context or beginning with the, where we are right now um, to discuss the city of Dakar and, and what you think of the BNR. Um, well, in fact, I just arrived uh, one day before today. So I was here yesterday and today. So my experience of Dakar is only two days experience. So it's not a very deep experience. Say. And what are your initial impressions of Dakar as a city? I already came 10 years ago, in fact, and I was just in the um, neighborhood of the, uh, at the port. So I just saw the port at that time. And now I can see a little bit more of, uh, of the city. So I don't know, I'm not really surprised of the city. I feel like I already have some uh, uh, connection with uh, African cities. So, um, First, uh, I go to Algeria quite often, and uh, uh, I, I visit the city like uh, Dar es Salaam. Or I don't know. I have some um, ideas of the African capitals, uh, which is a city with a lot of people, and uh, you have to to slam, uh, as you can say. So yeah, for me, I, this time especially, I feel it like very, very natural without any, you know. Except you know, some problems of the city because it's not your city, so it's uh, uh, sometimes difficult. But I feel like uh, yeah, I feel a little bit like like at home here. Uh, I don't have any. So it feels like home. It's like a, a, a you know, it feels a lot like um, Algeria to some extent. In yeah, there's something like um, like uh, old um, old French colonies. <laughs> Uh, I would say like uh, the architecture of Algeria and the architecture of uh, Dakar are not the same. No. Uh, but I was talking about uh, the French architecture in Algeria, which really interesting because it's uh, it looks like uh, French architecture, but with African uh-huh. people living in it. So it has changed, you know. Even uh, the building has changed, but the way the organization of the city has like uh, uh, has to adapt to the African way of life. So, yeah, uh, I find it quite interesting, but yeah. as I told you, really, it was quite easy, I, mean, I didn't find it very difficult. So the first work I encountered by you would have been uh, Le Machete um, de Employ, which was the work where you went and read your CV out publicly in the streets of Paris. Um, I was just curious to know whether that was your first intervention into spatial environments. Yeah, this work, I, I, I charted it in English as uh, the job market, I think, <laughs> because that's the place where you look for a job. You know? And uh, uh, yeah, that's interesting that you begin uh, your interview by the sort of uh, intervention, because there are like um, city intervention, like how an artist uh, can find his place in a city. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this video you're talking about is a performance where uh, it was a um, quite difficult period uh, of life uh, because uh, I, I was coming to Paris and I just discovered the city there and I didn't have any job and I was looking for a job desperately and I couldn't find anything. So I think when you are in such a situation, like of a crisis situation, you, you focus on the, um, on the crazy situation uh, that looked like yours. So uh, you begin to see people who are asking for money in the streets, to begin to, to look at the musicians. So you, your point of view is uh, focus on other, uh, other areas. So uh, the job market was uh, something related to that situation of the artist, how to, how to be an artist in the city without any money and uh, how a crisis situation can uh, create um, a solution, like finding a job, and at the same time, like create uh, an artwork. At the end, I didn't find any job, but I did an artwork with it. And I think the next work that you, uh, that a lot of people have encountered is um, Philly of 2008, so mm-hmm. five years later, and you're still working in um, Paris and working in these contexts, and that was a, um, a, a statue of, of, of Tutankhamun that you were uh, bamboozling people into thinking that it was a, a street artist. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk about the connection between those projects and perhaps how um, your work developed between those two projects. Yeah, definitely, definitely, that's right. I, I, there's like a gap between the job market, the first one was in 2000, 
uh, June 2003, and the other one was like five years later. So five years later is like a way uh, that uh, I just, um, I knew how the city works and I begin to understand how uh, to find a solution. And Philippe is a solution, like a, a money solution, because uh, it's a mannequin, uh, a plastic mannequin that uh, is uh, on the public space and uh, supposed to be um, a statue, uh, uh, how do you say, a performer, a performer who imitates a statue. So yeah, Philippe is a way of finding a solution how, how an art work can help you to, to, to earn money. And uh, at the same time, this is a, a sort of uh, allegory, allegory of um, what is, a, what is a, a piece of art, what is a sculpture. How people, uh, if they know it's a sculpture, react, and if they know if it's a human being, they react. And so that's, uh, yeah, that's a, a, a really interesting thing between the two works, exactly. I think the next work that I think is an interesting shift, maybe moving further from the language of sculpture and more into the formal qualities of film, was the work you did, uh, the message project, which was where you spliced together footage from the English and Arabic version of the film, The Message. Um, and you talk in one interview I read about your encounter with that film. Um, but what I wanted to know is more about uh, the, the this kind of idea of um, the film work dealing with language and perhaps um, another idea which you've talked about is this sort of inversion or double inversion of reality. So if you could speak about the relationship perhaps, perhaps between language and reality and, and how those things play in your work, because they seem to be reoccurring um, points. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, um, the message project, so it's a, it's a movie that's been shot in two versions in Arabic and, and English version, and I just edited the movie to make this cause. English actor with uh, Arab one. What is interesting is uh, uh, the purpose of the movie is to propose actors uh, who look like uh, people who are going to watch the movie. So the American can see like uh, American actor playing Arabs and the Arab one can have like in front of the eyes like a very famous Arab actor. So you can recognize yourself in the, in the actor. That's a process of, uh, you know, this is a, uh, filmic process yeah, to to help the spectator to, to be in relation with the, the actor. So this is really interesting how the cinema choose uh, a specific actors for a specific audience. So my goal was uh, to, to make a connection between these two versions, how you can, the, the process is quite easy because uh, like at the end you have the English who speak and Arab reply and they understand themselves. So you can, you can see how this, uh, two cultures can be linked by uh, um, a simple movie, but as you said, yeah, the, the question of audience is um, uh, is quite present in, in this movie. And what about the importance of culture, both the Arabic culture and then uh, French culture intertwining? Because you spoke about the relationships between French architecture and Algeria, for example. Um, perhaps you want to elaborate on um, th this idea of, of, of culture as being a sort of uh, how do you say? Um, uh, uh, manifold and perhaps a complex idea that someone like Edward Gleeson would have talked about a world in relation um, and connectivity and creolization. I think that filters, and we're in Dakar, which is a, an example. Yeah, yeah. I would say, like, uh, from uh, let's say Algiers, Algiers is a city, it's a French city at the beginning, like uh, really French. I mean, uh, you can see it, and uh, with people with uh, Algerian living in it. And uh, I would say, like me, I live in France with uh, like uh, an Algerian body with uh, someone who has French education living in his body also. So there's something uh, really related to what you are and where you live and how uh, you you imagine process to uh, uh, to live, you know, to live in peace in this uh, in your in your area with your way of thinking and with your uh, back culture. But uh, the message project also uh, refers to the relation that uh, the second generation has with the first generation, with their parents. When you know you, you are in another country, uh, you speak with your parents in a language and they reply in another language. You know? This happens a lot of time you know, with uh, Arab people who speak French with their parents and the parents don't speak French, they reply in Arabic. So the process of uh, the message project is uh, something really exists and you, I grew up with, uh, with this. And even when uh, the project has been made, uh, the, the, the first movie by Mustafa Akkad, he 
as, a, as an Arab uh, person, he thought about making this movie in two versions. He, he, he could think about just do it in English or just in Arabic, but even in his way of thinking, he already uh, in, uh, has an integration of this concept of having a, a double language. So, so this is something... Uh, I, I would like to refer to another work that I have, which is not um, a video, but it's a sculpture that uh, shows a, a globe spinning so fast that the, all, yeah. all the countries of the world disappear. Uh, this, I think we are living in this... Uh, sort of word today. This um, confusion, but also like a melting pot, and uh, like uh, we, we don't know how, how to manage this sort of thing. Or we try to find solution to, to manage this sort of uh, new situation. I mean, I say new, but it's not so new, because now, I mean, the, we, we, we have this idea of one word for now, like 50, 50 years. But uh, we still trying to manage our relation with, uh, with the nations, and. Uh, so, in a way, we are in a post-nationalist uh, situation, I think, especially with this network, or with the internet, and with this way of communication and uh, of traveling. So, this is a real uh, uh, in interesting situation. And could you talk about your two projects that you have coming up, both um, the work here in Dakar, called When You Look Into the Fire, and the exhibition at the Mosaic Group? Uh, Called Intervening Space, curated by Yasmina Ragan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, uh, there's two different projects, like uh, in the form, in the, in the way that I present them, and also it's uh, um, uh, they, they, they talk about a similar thing, which is, uh, I would say, the disappearance. Uh, uh, when do it fire cooks is the uh, original title when you look into the fire it's um, a work about uh, disappearance and uh, we were talking about the city of um, of, uh, of Dakar but and the city of Paris also but uh, when doing for your cooks it's uh, it's a work that I brought from Dubai from the city of Dubai so I think this work is also connected to to the city because uh, uh, when doing for your cooks it's um, um, an advertisement uh, for um, let's say a, a light light shop. So you can see a, a little girl watching a light bulb, and uh, because uh, this um, uh, cardboard, this light box is uh, in the city with a lot of sun, uh, after a certain time the image disappears, and uh, you can have like a, a poetic connection with this uh, little girl. You can imagine that she looked into the fire such a long time that the fire make her disappear. So that's, that's, uh, that's the purpose of the work, I think. Uh, so it's a way of uh, erasing uh, the anthropomorphic uh, figure, uh, like make disappear the body. And uh, the other work, Half of What You See, is a work that I show uh, at the Mosaic Room. It's uh, also a question of uh, taking off information and uh, the process is really easy. It's a disco ball with many mirrors that I take off all the mirror of the disco ball and it remains only one mirror on the disco ball. And this mirror is lighted by a light that turn, uh, that spin uh, um, with the synchronization of the last mirror. So you, you have the reflection of this mirror on the wall uh, and uh, on the other side you have the, sh uh, the shadow of the disco ball and you can see the moon. It's like um, an, uh, a model, an astronomic model, uh, which is not uh, referring to the reality but more uh, of a way of thinking and of a way of uh, seeing the world. Uh, but this is really... Um, uh, a way for me to uh, integrate some uh, scientific uh, concept uh, of gravitation, of uh, the, the way of the, the universe works, but in a completely fictional way. Uh, but I really, I really love this work. I find it really, really, uh, it's very smooth and really peaceful. And uh, I invite you to come, definitely. Mm -hmm.